Good morning, everybody. So today in my lecture video, I will be discussing gene therapy. Now, you know that why this particular topic is important for everybody, for every researcher, for every student, because you know that we suffer from various kinds of your genetic disease. And as we suffer from various kinds of your genetic disease, like monogenetic disorder, polygenetic disorder. Monogenetic disorder means that when the mutation is in single gene, polygenetic disorder is when there is multiple lesion. So these diseases cannot be treated. Infectious diseases can be treated, but genetic disease could not be treated. So prevention is one of the greatest strategies. But if you have the disease, how can you rectify it forever? So this is one of your answer that means gene therapy can answer to these unsolved questions so that is why we are more interested in gene therapy but before i move into the very details of the gene therapy i just want to highlight one thing that gene therapy there are many uh, social ethical issues associated with gene therapy right many social and ethical issues has been imposed on gene therapy till date we are unable to understand that whether this particular gene therapy will be helpful for us or it is not right first point is that this particular gene therapy is an advanced high throughput technique so will it be available to all strata of the society will all strata of the society avail this treatment that is one of the greatest important factor right you need to understand it. next is your gene therapy means you are rectifying a particular gene. You are introducing some gene. I will tell you in details in my slides. So if this particular gene results in some wrong integration and that may lead to death of an individual. So one of the important things which we need to understand is that the benefit versus risk. That means if it is of benefit than that of your risk, if the benefit supersedes, uh, supersedes the risk, then only we can go for gene therapy. So next comes the contents. So what we will be discussing in this lecture is what is gene therapy? What is the basic aspect of gene therapy? And of course the history, the contribution of various scientists as well as the patient in development of gene therapy, in development of this technique. And third one is the types, the type of gene therapy. So in this lecture, these are the contents. In further lecture, I will be discussing other very details of your gene therapy. So, gene therapy is an approach of treating disease by either modifying the expression of an individual genes or correcting of abnormal genes. So, this in this particular therapy, we can either correct the gene, that means our defective gene is replaced by a therapeutic gene or we may modify the expression of the gene. That means the wrong expression can be modified to your correct expression. So you know that if you see this picture, if you see this image rather, gene therapy gives patient a healthy version of defective gene. So it will give you a healthy version of defective gene. So this is a cell with a defective gene. So you know this is supposed the healthy gene. So the healthy gene has been introduced and once the healthy gene has been introduced the cell function is restored but in this cell you get to see that the gene is not getting recombined right but there are many uh, in many cases the gene gets combined with the host chromosome giving or restoring the normal function of the cell so next is this can be accomplished by so what are the procedures by which it can be accomplished Replacing a mutated gene that caused disease with a healthy copy of the gene. So we need to incorporate a healthy copy of the gene. So that is one approach. Another approach is inactivating or knocking out a mutated gene that is functioning improperly. So you simply knock out or remove that particular inactivating gene or mutating gene that is functionally wrong. right? Introducing a new gene into the body to help fight a disease to help rectify a disease so that is the true sense of your gene therapy 
now comes the contribution so there are many contribution and i will not only uh, give uh, importance or emphasize on the scientists who have contributed to gene therapy but i will also highlight those individuals who have sacrificed their life or who is a part of the gene therapy trial and for that today we are here to discuss gene therapy to bring about this concept to you people right so it is in 1960 the concept of gene therapy was introduced so this concept was introduced back in 1960 in 1972 friedman and roblin authored a paper in science titled gene therapy for human disease genetic disease so this particular person has a huge contribution this is friedman contribution in the field of your gene therapy now in 1984 a retroviral vector system was designed that could efficiently insert regions of gene into mammalian chromosome so the retroviral vector the vector based gene delivery came into being because people were thinking before that that how the genes will be delivered right so some tools are required to deliver the gene inside the cell so retroviral vector came into being now i'll come to 1990 it's not that much back right the first approved gene therapy in the us took place on 14 september 1990 at the national institute of health under the direction of william french anderson so this particular scientist was called as father of gene therapy so this particular scientist was called as the father of gene therapy next came your 4 year old asanti de silva who received a treatment for a genetic defect that left her with adenosine dmides severe combined immunodeficiency a severe immune system deficiency so this is a monogenetic disorder which basically arises from your adenosine dmides deficiency and as a result the t cell cannot differentiate which results in a severe combined immunodeficiency so immunodeficiency is generated because of a monogenetic disorder and this child was suffering with that particular disease and it was this particular child who was given the gene therapy treatment and and now this particular child has actually grown up we will get to see that this rectified her defect of sci next came in 1992 that is your dr claudio bodignan performed the first procedure of gene therapy using hematopoietic stem cell as vector to deliver gene intended to correct hereditary disease so hematopoietic stem cell use came into being by this by the hands with this dr claudio bodignan okay. then came one of the disaster of gene therapy that is why till date there is a contradiction that whether to go for gene therapy or not when to go for gene therapy right gene therapy is not for the designer baby not to just inculcate your intelligence and inculcate your beauty it is for those diseases in which the person will die so at least with gene therapy the person can survive where the benefit supersedes the risk so this is the death of jesse gelsinger in the gene therapy experiment it is it was uh, uh, it was known that after the gene therapy experiment on him he developed severe several clots throughout the body and a fever and from that he died so that is one of the unfortunate effect of your gene therapy next came in 2003 a research team inserted gene into the brain for the first time and they used liposomes which unlike viral vector are small enough to cross the blood brain barrier so people started experimenting on different regions with the help of this gene therapy and with different tools and we know we will be discussing that that is your viral vector for gene therapy non viral vector for gene therapy etc in 2006 a successful use of gene therapy to treat two adult patient for x linked chronic granulomatous disease was done so slowly slowly you get to see that more and more experimentation and more and more trials are being done to establish gene therapy in 
the first gene therapy trial for inherited retinal disease came into being. So these are the various history till date about gene therapy. 2010, an 18 year old male patient in France with beta thalassemia major had been successfully treated. So that was great, right? Because you know that how painful is thalassemia. So if the thalassemia could be treated with gene therapy, it is really great. In 2011, medical community accepted that it can cure HIV. As in 2008, Jero Hutter has cured a man from HIV using gene therapy. And now in books, you get to see that how your gene therapy is treating HIV AIDS. There are various mechanisms by which you can treat HIV AIDS with the help of your gene therapy. In 2011 to 15, research is still going and number of diseases that has been treated successfully by the gene therapy is increasing. So it is an increasing graph and in the near future, we hope that this particular gene therapy will be safe for the patient. That is the first important point and ethical issues will be removed. That means it will be available to the every aspect of the society, every strata of the society and it will be an economic process. So types of gene therapy, so if we focus on the types of gene therapy, it is your somatic gene therapy and your germline gene therapy. The somatic gene therapy is the gene therapy in the somatic cell. But when you do somatic gene therapy, the disease get rectified for that particular generation. Right? But when we do germline gene therapy, that means this can be inherited from generation to generation. So the disease rectifies throughout the generation. But, you know, that uh, again, from the ethical point of view, ethics point of view, because we have so many ethics imposed on gene therapy, I will highlight one small point. That is, in gene therapy, the germline gene therapy is quite unethical because you are basically uh, manipulating the embryo or you are basically acting, using the gene in those cells which are basic, uh, which may lead to a uh, fetus, which may lead to uh, individual right so you are manipulating with the unborn right so that is why this type of gene therapy is actually having some ethical issues germline gene therapy but it will go with the somatic gene therapy the somatic cell gene therapy therapeutic gene is transferred to the somatic cell therapeutic gene is transferred to the germline cell or germline gene therapy it is introduced introduction of the gene into the bone marrow cell blood cells and skin cells. These genes are introduced into the egg and the sperm, which will ultimately give rise to an embryo. So that is why it is saying that it is quite unethical. Will not be inherited in later generation, but it is inheritable and passed on to later generation. At present, all research are direct to correct genetic defect in somatic cell. For safety, ethical and technical reason, I was highlighting that point. It is not being attempted, attempted at present. So even you know that the germline gene therapy can rectify it forever, but still we cannot attempt from the ethical point of view. This is another point, rather the last slide of my presentation today, that is type of gene therapy, which is your ex vivo and in vivo. Now in vivo gene therapy means, that means the therapeutic gene is directly delivered into the patient. You get to see that this is a particular therapeutic gene, CRISPR-Cas9 therapeutic, packed in a delivery vesicle, such as lipid, lipo nanoparticle, and that is directly injected into the patient. That is your in vivo gene therapy. But when I talk of ex vivo gene therapy, what we do is that we take out the cells, we remove the cells from the patient, defective cells. Then the caspase Cas9 is delivered to the cell in culture resulting in desired edit or desired trait. It is being expressed. It is being understood that yes, it is expressing properly. Therapeutically modified cells are expanded, expanded in culture and expression is being done and then they are returned back to the patient. So you understand from this overall procedure, no doubt, ex vivo gene therapy is better than that of your in vivo gene therapy. Why? Because in vivo gene therapy, you don't know where the gene will be integrating. So if it is inactivating a normal gene, then that will be absolutely lethal for the mankind, absolutely lethal for the individual who is undergoing the treatment. But ex vivo gene therapy, you know that the exact gene is being transferred, the exact modified cell has been transferred, so there will be no problem. So with this, 
I end my class today. If you have any question, you can ask me.